Toastmasters, in this speech, I want to take a stand against a certain way of thinking that is very common in America. Peter Thiel calls this mindset indefinite optimism. This mindset is illustrated by the brand with the slogan, life is good. People who have this mindset think that life will be good and get better eventually, even if they don't have a specific reason to think that or any kind of plan for improving their lives. As a young man, I internalized this mindset from the wider culture, and it actually caused me quite a few problems. And the reason is that several aspects of life are intrinsically competitive. In order to succeed in these areas, you have to essentially outcompete someone else and grab the prize that they are also aiming for. I want to talk about some experiences I've had in some areas of life that have this quality. The first is very simple, housing. We all know that California has been in a housing crisis for decades. And this housing crisis hasn't remained confined to California, but it's actually spread to almost the entire country. The main factor here is that local governments have the power to restrict housing construction, and they often do so to benefit the current homeowners. I think we would all agree that having a nice place to live in a decent neighborhood is an important part of the good life. But reasonable, spacious homes in desirable neighborhoods are quite scarce. So you're going to have to compete with many, many other people to get that. Heather and I actually spent quite some time looking for houses in the Bay Area. We would have experiences where we would go to an open house for a small one or two bedroom home that was selling for a million dollars or more. And there would be dozens of people coming to this open house to see it. And it gave us this very palpable sense that in order to obtain this prize that would make us significantly happier, we'd have to push out someone else, edge them out of the housing competition. The second area of life is romance. When I was in college, I had a crush on Natalie Portman. And she actually went to Harvard. So I saw her walking around the campus every now and then. Now, of course, Natalie Portman is way out of my league. That's the reality. Natalie's going to date guys who are actors or professional athletes or just really rich. But I felt like the universe was taunting me a little bit because it, it was showing me this dream girl of mine that was just way out of my league. A little bit later, I would, I used online dating apps and I'm sure well, maybe none of you have had this experience, but if you're a guy and you're on an online dating service, you have this terrible situation where you find this amazing lady on the app who's highly educated, very attractive, many interests in common, and you spend a lot of time composing a really clever, intelligently worded message to her, and you send it, and you just hear nothing back. And the reason is that this amazing lady has hundreds of other guys also sending her messages. And these other guys have more money. Maybe they're more attractive. They have a really nice car. They're really well-dressed. Whatever it is, the competition is too intense. Again, we have this area of life where there's an intense competition, but it's also really important. The third area I want to describe is work. As a young person, many, many of us have grandiose dreams or ambitions of becoming rich or famous or highly successful. Then at some point, we realize we're not going to be a professional athlete or a rock star. We scale down a little bit, focus on more realistic goals. But even after we scale back like that, there's still an intense competition for the good jobs. Many of your jobs are either boring or don't pay very well, or are not very fulfilling. 
relating to this again to my own experience as a young guy, I was quite confident that I was going to have an easy time getting a good job because I went to a top university, I accumulated several advanced degrees, and I developed a skill set in computer engineering, which was a highly sought after, a highly valuable skill set. But realistically, I still haven't been able to find a job that I really like. My current job pays quite well, but it's not very satisfying. I'll mention one funny thing that happens at LinkedIn, which is that most of the work is pretty boring, but then once in a while, there'll be a really interesting piece of work to do. Maybe it has some researchy aspect to it. Maybe it relates to machine learning somehow. And then there'll be this huge competition of all the engineers trying to get selected to be the person who does this actual fun piece of work. So there's competition to get the job and then there's competition within the job. Friends, I'm not trying to discourage you or make you depressed. The way to avoid indefinite optimism is definite optimism. This means you need to have a serious attitude towards the challenges and the struggles of life, the competitions of life. If you sit back and wait passively for good things to happen to you, you're going to be disappointed. Instead, you should make a plan, you should make a strategy, and you should become very serious about pursuing that strategy with determination and creativity. Thanks very much.